So welcome everyone uh, again uh, to the to the web app workshop. This is uh, day two. Um, I'm just going to quickly uh, mention what we're going to do today. Uh, first, uh, we will review the exercises from yesterday, uh, just to uh, show you the solution. Um, Austin will will go over the um, uh, yeah the cold uh, box uh, cold sandbox <laughs> project. Um, and then we'll have a little break. Um, I will uh, just give a, an, an, an introduction or an overview of uh, uh, how to build generic DHS2 applications. Um, we will take a break. And then this time we will split uh, the second part of the presentations. Um, so first, uh, Austin will um, give a presentation on translations. We will have an exercise, a very simple exercise on translations. Then we'll take a little break and then uh, we will talk about uh, the data store and same thing we'll have an exercise for the data store. Um, and then we'll yeah close for the day. Um, so this is what I have uh, now I think we can get started with the uh, with the review of the exercises from yesterday. Um, and if you have any questions also from from any of the things that we covered yesterday, uh, this is the the time to, to do so. Um, so I'll stop sharing. Um, I don't know, if the, Austin, are you ready? Sure. Oh, thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Mm, let me drop my window here. So you should be able to see a window with the workshop two um, project here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna go through the exercise that we worked on yesterday. So there is a solution that's been committed to this repository as well. So you can go ahead and look at that if you want to see the, the final solution, but we're gonna go ahead and do it together quickly as well. Um, so I'm gonna start with this exercises. Um, uh, oh, sorry, so the code sandbox is actually, if you go uh, back, yeah, here. There we go. Uh, if you go back to the folder, yeah, this. Yep, so just opening up the code sandbox here. And you'll see that it's, it's running the app platform to build the server. Um, uh, in the code sandbox, which is kind of cool that it's it's running completely in the browser, but you get a full terminal environment. You can um, interact with the, the application in, in any way you'd want. Um, one thing that I did see some people um, having some trouble with yesterday um, or, or uh, looking at yesterday was some uh, issues with logging in. And it can be kind of difficult sometimes when you have a very small uh, screen over here that you're trying to work on code and also this um, uh, the demo on the right side uh, to one tip for code sandbox is if in the top right corner here you can click on open in new window when you do that it will open this just the um, the actual running code in a new window that you can use for uh, testing and debugging um, and when I do that now I can I can make this a lot smaller and focus just on the code here um, in the left side. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fork the sandbox actually before I do anything else. Um, let me see where I do this. Fork sandbox. Maybe it's so this will create a new. Oh, yeah, okay. I think it. Uh, I think it might have been. I'm mm -hmm. not sure, but uh, yeah, I think it was already forked. Apologies. Um, but basically, this is creating a copy for uh, for me, um, so that I can um, yeah create a uh, a new version, and then it gives me a unique URL for that as well. Uh, I think we've been through this on some of the other projects. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look at the um, uh, the code here. Um, so I'm just sort of exploring. There are some uh, comments that say exactly what we need to do in each of these files. But I'm going to start with the app.js file because that's going to be the beginning of our application. Um, I can see that it's rendering just a program list, as Kai said yesterday uh, when he was demonstrating this. So I'm going to look at the program list um, uh, file, with, which has a program list component and a number of different um, uh, to-dos items in this 
uh, in this component itself. So there's three in this file that I'm seeing. I'm going to start with the first one uh, and we'll go ahead and get started with that. So I'm gonna open this in a new window again. So I had the other one open, but that was uh, the other fork um, so that I can test here. And now I'm going to sc uh, scoot this over so that I have lots of room to, sh to show what's going on. So here we have to convert a static query into a dynamic one. We have a static query here that is um, basically hard-coded page size of two. Uh, and we want to be able to uh, make this dynamic so that it comes, the, the number of, of, uh, of um, programs that are returned is, is dynamic based on what's going on in the application. Um, in order to do that, this is a static query now, we have to make it a dynamic query. In order to do that, we turn the params field in this query into a function. So you can do this as a, um, the easiest way or the most succinct way, I guess, is to do this as an arrow function. So I'm gonna say page size, um, which is going to take that as a variable. And then this is actually the body of the function. So we don't want this to be the body of the function. We want it to be a, a return value. So I can actually just do this. Um, and this will return an object from this function that has order, page size, and page um, values in it. Um, a little bit more verbose way of doing the same exact thing is to have a body of this function and say return an object. Uh, so this is maybe a little bit more verbose, a little bit easier, oops, sorry, that should be return, um, a little bit easier to read um, or, or understand potentially. So that's another way to write the same thing. And you could have some logic in this function as well if you wanted to. And finally, just to make this absolutely clear, you could actually call this a function as well. Um, so it does not necessarily need to be an arrow function, though there are some advantages to using an arrow function in this, in this situation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep it an arrow function for now. So we now have this page size variable that's being passed to this function. This will be come from two different places, um, potentially. One is in use data query itself. We can pass the initial variables that come from, for instance, properties or props that are passed as programs list. Um, or we could also pass new variables to this um, query when we call refetch. Um, for now, we're going to do just passing the, the initial variables on load of this function or of this co component. Um, but before that, I'm not actually using this variable yet. So I'm going to change this to uh, actually use the page size. So I'm going to be very explicit here. I'm going to say page size is coming from these variables that are passed to this params function. Um, and then the solution here is we need to basically pass variables to this hook um, in the second, in the object, uh, options object, which is the second argument to the use data query hook. We have an, uh, a variables parameter that we can pass uh, and we can go ahead and say page size is going to be five. So this is, the, this is going to be a solution to that task one. So we've done everything that it says here. We've converted this static query into a dynamic one changing the page size to dynamically uh, be able to be updated. Um, and we have defined a variables key in the options object to be able to render the first five programs. Um, so if I go ahead and save this, I'm going to reload this and actually I'm going to get the academy um, instance. I'm going to log into that. Oops, and I have a problem. Ah, I have using Brave and I have shields up, which is problematic. It doesn't let me have cookies across sites. So if I turn down, turn off my shields in browse in Brave, I now have this list, and you can see that I have five um, uh, five programs listed. Um, this may not seem like it's, um, I'll, I'll, we'll actually change this to three and we can see that that changes, oops, should change to three. Yep, now we have three programs listed. Um, this may not seem super interesting when you're hard coding the, the value here rather than here, but what would happen if we had um, count or something as the value, the variable that's passed to the program list 
um, function. We can then pass that as the initial variable. Um, and what this will do is count right now is undefined, but we can define it back in this app.js file as another prop. So we can say count equals 10. And now we're going to uh, see that this, uh, we don't need to change anything in this program list uh, file in order to change the number of programs that are returned. So if I re re refresh this page, we should see a list of 10. Now, if I go back to this and I change this to three or five again, that's what the, the result that we wanted. We see that we have five. So that's the first task on this list. I'm gonna go through the, the rest of them uh, fairly quickly as well. So we're gonna now add an alert when a program has been created using the use alert hook. There are actually two different ways to do this. So there, there's actually uh, two to do's here. Um, I'm gonna use the one mechanism first and then the other one uh, second. So I have actually here, um, I'm gonna import. So I'm, first I'm gonna, oh, it's already, it's already imported, but this use alert hook comes from the app runtime dependency. And I'm going to initialize that and uh, get back a show function equals use alert. And then I can go ahead and write a message. So the message can be a string and I can say um, program created exclamation point. Uh, so this is very simple, very straightforward, just as a, a, a creates a, an alert that has a, a program created message. Um, it returns a function called show, which we can call when we want this alert to actually show up. Um, and we're gonna do that here. So let's do, uh, so we, we're, we're calling the refetch function, which returns a promise. And then I can do a then and say show. And I could actually rename this. I often like to rename this. So I could say show success alert or something like that. So that it has a bit, little bit of a better name. Uh, and I'm going to do that here, show success alert. So now if I save this, refresh this. And actually, I think I'm missing something. No, nope, maybe I'm not. Um, I'm going to create a new program, say new program, uh, a new program so that it shows up at the top. Click add, it shows up here at the top and we see this program created alert down here at the bottom. So that is what we just added. Um, that basically waits until the program has been created and then creates this um, alert that shows up. By default, that alert shows up for eight seconds. You can change that if you would like when they use alert hook, you can pass some options to the uh, second object here. One of those is duration. And we can say duration is 2000 milliseconds it means it will show up for two seconds. This one already exists, that's why. Oops. Oh, we haven't added the delete. So then we have this program created, lasts for two seconds, and then it should go away. Perhaps I miss click that. This should work for two, second, two, two seconds, but um, where that, that wasn't part of this pro program uh, uh, exercise anyway. Uh, I do want to show the um, another way of doing this, which is, so we're right now we're manually calling this show success alert after we call refetch, which maybe isn't exactly what we want to do. We could also have done, because this refetch happens after the um, show success or after the, the creation, which happens in the add program, we could actually say show success alert uh, asynchronously or, or in parallel with the refetch. Um, the refetch takes some time, but we don't really need to wait for the refetch to finish before we show success alert. So we could do it like this. Um, but there's one other way that we could do this. It might be a little bit cleaner. And that is, uh, actually no, uh, that would be to move it into the add program. So if we go to our add program here and we have this mutate, um, we have this on create function. Um, we could actually create, move the alert into this uh, component, 
so that the uh, on complete of this mutation does the alert for us. So we don't actually need to uh, know anything about what this add program component is doing in the program list. Uh, and that would be another way of solving this problem. But we have the, this done now in two different ways um, in, the, uh, um, in the program list uh, component. So let's go ahead and move on to to do number three. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these to do's for one and two. And now I'm going to look at to do three. So to do three says pass props to the delete program component. You will need to pass two props, ID and refetch function. So let's let's just take a look at this first. So I can go to definition of this delete program. I assume that's going to work in this code sandbox. Maybe it's not. I'm just going to go to the delete program fun function because that seems to be faster. It's still loading here. I'm not sure why. Um, here we have, so we have a delete program which needs to take a couple props. So we need the ID and the refetch, as it said before. Uh, and we need to complete and uncomment the un on click function below to be able to delete the ID. The then method in JavaScript. Um, yeah, using the then method in JavaScript, um, which uh, will do something after the successful completion of our promise. So we're going to go ahead and take our two props here. We're going to say ID and refetch. We'll save that. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the programs list and pass those here as we saw, ID equals. Um, and let's see what we have here. We want the ID of this particular program that we're looking at. So that's going to be prog.id. And we also want the refetch function. So we're going to say refetch equals refetch. The refetch is coming from uh, up here on the use data query. So basically, we want to refetch the list after we've deleted a program. So now we have this uh, delete program component, which takes an ID and a refetch function. The mutate is passing, um, uh, is using a mutation, which isn't defined yet. So we're going to need to define the delete mutation. Let's go ahead and do that. So our uh, resource for this mutation is going to be programs. Our type is going to be delete. And then we need an ID. But we don't know the ID. This is another case of the um, dynamic query or mutation. We don't know the ID when we're writing this code. So we need to take this as a variable. So we're going to take an ID variable. And we're going to return that ID variable when we generate this mutation. So this is going to delete the program with ID that we pass in. Um, in order to do that, we're going to pass the, um, uh, the variables. As we mentioned before, you could do this here with variables ID. But for a mutation, that doesn't make as much sense because we want to actually tell the mutation which, um, uh, which program to delete when we're calling it. Um, so when we do this mutate function, we can pass an ID there as well. I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this. So this is our onClick function, uh, which we can add down here to the button. So onClick equals onClick. And you'll see that there's an empty object that's passed to the mutate right now. That's the variables that will be passed for this mutation. So we want our ID to be passed here. So our ID should be the one that we get from our props. This uh, on click function is re recreated every time we render with new props. So that should be fine. Um, and it says, uh, yeah, it's using the then um, function to or method to refetch the entire list of programs after this mutation completes. So that should be OK. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's see what happens. So. We've got a couple programs that we added here that we don't really want anymore. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And you'll see that it uh, not only did it um, show a, a loading spinner and um, de deactivate the or disable the delete button when I clicked that, but it also refetched this entire um, list without that program that we just deleted um, as soon as it was completed. So let's go ahead and do that again. And we've now deleted a couple of programs um, in 
from this list using the, the tools that we just uh, used. Um, I believe that's it. I think that's all of the, um, the tasks that we had. Let's go ahead and double check that in the readme. We have task one, task two, and task three. And I believe we've completed all of those successfully.